And moving on to our next session, which was actually supposed to be our previous session, the topic will be artificial intelligence and smart business. And I would like to start by inviting our moderator, Ms. Essan Tumar, Managing Director of Medtronic. And as she takes her seat, I'll continue with our panelists. Yoram Kraus, CEO of Infiasia Limited. Professor Sarit Kraus, Barilan University. Mr. Katriel Ronan Bass. Mr. Adiruza Babolan, Managing Partner of Grow and EMEA. Hussein Kanji, Partner of Hoxton Ventures. And Tuche Urlu, Founding Partner of Interhub Legal. The floor is yours, and we have about 30 minutes. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. And first of all, we have a very tight agenda. And I apologize for the delay. And there was a, uh, the previous panels in the morning, there was a shift, unfortunately. Uh, I would like to welcome my, my dear, valuable uh, panelist speakers here. We will have a couple of uh, presentations, but mostly we prefer to have a kind of dialogue, open dialogue. And I would like to also take the attention of the audience while listening, not only think about the future of the the currently they're working for a corporate company or the government, it will be wise for you to consider what is the impact on you as an individual. Therefore, I would like to start the conversation because we have got the, the, our dear valuable team members here, uh, Joram Kraus from Infi Group and Professor Sarit Kraus from Bar Ilan University and Ali Rizabe from uh, Grand and EMEA from Turkey. Hussein Bey from Ventures from UK, and Tuğçe Hanım from uh, Turkey and US, I would like to say. I would love to, in general, talk with you initially, uh, Professor Sarit, so welcome again, and your overall perspective in general, and you have a presentation I think you would like to go through. Do you prefer to go to the stage here, you prefer, with the mic? The first presentation of Professor Sarit, please. And the, the mic, please, and also the presentation. Thank you for staying and listening to us. And I would like to tell you what I like to do. I like to develop and work on intelligent agent computer systems that interact proficiently with people. What these agents need to be, they need to be autonomous, they need to know how to plan, adaptive, they uh, need especially to be able to cooperate with other people and with other computer systems. And if there is an adversary they need to know how to face the adversary. What these agents can do, they can support people, they can replace people, and they can be used for training people. So let me give you a few examples of how my systems, my computer agent, can help people. Any problem? No, I'm fine? Okay. So, supporting people. We develop with General Motors a computer system that supports people in cars in the way to how to save energy in electrical cars that, uh, you know, they will feel comfortable in the car, in the air conditioning, and will save energy. We went forward and develop agent that make the autonomous cars understand what the passengers in the autonomous car want. You know, when I'm driving with my husband, you know, I'm telling him, be careful. He understands what I want. But will our autonomous car understand what the, uh, the passenger, what I want? So that's what our agents are able to do. Uh, in another system where autonomous agents and computer systems support people is a system that 
we develop that runs in LAX, the Los Angeles Airport, since 2007, supporting the uh, uh, security people in the airport in deciding where to put um, a, a random checkpoint in the airport. And they are still using our system since 2007, and they are very happy. And we have agents that support in fraud private, uh, detection, and, uh, and we have agents that help in medical. For example, we have an agent, computer intelligent computer system, that support uh, how to allocate people in emergency room. If you were in emergency room recently, there are very big lines. Our agent can shorten this line by doing a good allocation. So these were agents that support people, but we have also agents that replace people. For example, we develop an agent, computer intelligent agent, that try to convince people to change their mind. We ask students before they came to the lab, you know, whether they want a healthy food or a cake. If they wanted a cake, our agent convinced them to take the uh, bar and the other way around. So uh, the agents can replace people by convincing. We have an agent that is a, uh, serve as a automated speech therapist, helping people in uh, rehabilitation of brain damaged people. We have an agent that can mediate people that are argue. And actually, we ran experiments a few years ago in Turkey with this agent. There were people from Turkey, and there were people from the US, and our agent mediate autonomously between them. But this autonomous intelligent agent can also be used to train people. For example, we have an agent for training people in getting ready for negotiation between employer and employee. So our agent can play the role of the employer, our agent can play the role of the employee, and the other side can train by interacting with them. We have agents that can play the role of a suspect in a very large European, uh, European uh, a project where they train, we train people law enforcement personnel in uh, working together for solving um, crimes. So just to give you a two minutes about the technology, I just told you about many, many uh, projects. So what is common to all these uh, projects? What is common to them? The common aspect is that we need to be able to predict people decision making. And these people are uh, very difficult to predict. Why? Because people are strange, I may say. They do not maximize expected utility. They are not rational. They are se we are sensitive to context. We lack knowledge of our own preferences. We are affected by complexity. We have problem of self-control. So what do we do? We have a methodology. You need to have data. You need to have humans models. You need to have machine learning, deep learning, that will help you generate models of human prediction. And once you have a model, a data of specific person, you need to put it into the model. And the model will give you prediction what the person will do. What, will, will he accept my negotiation offer? Will the, uh, uh, will the car uh, understand the person? So we need to be able to predict the people, but then we need also to know how to solve optimization problem. You, we are the humans, need to tell the agent what we want. The agent need to take the prediction model, put it inside the optimization problem, 
and then make, take an action and make a decision. So, and you know, if we have virtual reality, if we are able to explain the, pers the system decision making to the people, then we'll have good agent that can replace people, they can support people, and they can be used for training people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Highly appreciated. <laughs> and I would like to go with the ladies first. Atuja Hanam, can we get your perspective on the AI also, please? Sure. The first of all, the ladies, and then you, you will continue later on. <laughs> first ladies. Yes. Fast. <laughs> um, um, so, in terms of the definition of AI, I, I, I, I tend to like uh, Jerry uh, Kaplan's definition, where he puts it as the um, artificial intelligence, as the theory and development of computer systems that are able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. Tasks like uh, decision making, problem solving, learning, um, visual perception, um, uh, and so on. And he also um, underlines the fact that artificial intelligence is not an attempt to recreate human intelligence, but it's, it's an advance in automation, uh, which increases productivity, among other things. So, um, when I look at the AI's application in, in different sectors, and today I will be specifically talking about AI's um, application within the legal industry, I, I see that there are uh, two major uh, but uh, opposing views. Uh, one view is uh, sees uh, uh, robots within the context of legal industry, global lawyers, um, as, as a threat to human jobs, and um, they argue that robots will basically control humans in, in a maybe distant future, but that will happen. Uh, and the other view finds this very <laughs> exaggerated. Uh, and they argue that, uh, yes, there will be a, a gradual process where uh, humans will automate uh, their routine, mundane work, which will change the way legal work is being done, but it's not going to really change the way law and, and uh, legal industry or any other industry mm -hmm. for that matter uh, operates. Um, so is often the case. I think the truth lies somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, currently uh, there are certain fields of law uh, where highly sophisticated technologies are already in use. And there are other fields of law uh, where the legal practice is conducted exactly the way it was conducted 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I would like to talk a little bit about um, the, the um, application of AI systems mm -hmm. within the legal industry. Uh, there is an open source database initiated by Stanford, which is called CodeX. Yep. And CodeX um, in, uh, lists and categorizes uh, legal tech companies, thereby uh, providing a statistical data as to in which areas of law uh, legal tech innovation is currently occurring. And when we look at these statistics, we, we see several things. Um, first of all, there has been a substantial increase in the number of legal tech companies since 2012. And currently there are over uh, 1,000 active legal tech companies, uh, which in total uh, have raised over a billion USD dollars for their businesses. And more importantly, 70% of these companies are either marketplace companies or they're engaged in, uh, in uh, uh, document automation, legal research, or contract management. So basically these fields are are the ones where, where the high competition mm -hmm. is going on within the legal industry. Very, very valid, yeah. And just to wrap up, indeed, I mean, uh, I studied Harvard this summertime, yeah. and there was a big discussion about the ethics of AI, yeah. the future, and the ethic yeah. element, the morale is a very, yeah. very important part yeah. of it. So I would like to ask also the, our dear guest speaker about it. Uh, Bas, is AI intelligent? Here. As we discussed in the morning. AI, today, the way I see it, okay, where it meets us end users, yeah. it's not intelligent enough. While once the machine doesn't really imitate intelligent yes. human behavior, Very good point. it didn't reach its peak yet. 
So yes, we're in the beginning. Yeah. We're really in the beginning of this revolution. But there's a still a lot to go, and our company, Enfi, is taking that quantum leap to bring us to that space where the machine will actually be able to understand us. Perfect. Then, uh, Kraus, would you like to have this presentation, also the video? I mean, can we get a video, please? Yes. And I, if you don't mind, can I stand well, of up? Of course, please, please come over here. I'd like to stand up because I like to be a rock star, so this is a Excellent. So, shall we get a video, please? Thank you so much. First of all, thank you for those who stayed here and had the courage and the time and the eagerness to stay and hear us. My name is Renan Bass. I'm Chief Business Development of Infibond. And I'll start by first thanking our dear friend here, Errol. Errol, Errol user is a local partner, our Turkish partner. And I want to thank him for sharing our vision and bringing us to so many new places. So first of all, thank you. And I'll actually want to start about what we do. We'll start from there and I'll try to make it short and sweet. So we all can actually have time for the other panelists. What does Infi do? Infi has been able to create this unique AI machine, this unique algorithm that enables us in real time, or almost in real time, provide insights on our personality. We're a psychology AI-driven company. So what we do, we have, we have perfected in the past six years an engine, as I said, that maps out our personality. And what does that mean? It means on the first time, our personality traits. Second time, motivators, attitudes, fears. And then the third essence, our state of mind. Now, can you imagine what could be done with it? It caters so many vectors, and in the bottom line, increases revenue to all our customers. And we'll, I'll start here, my presentation, by giving you the raw numbers that we increase the revenue for our customers by double digit, the conversion rate and the, and the revenue by 200%, okay? And we'll start from here if you don't mind. So now, how do I use this? Where did I put something? Green. Okay, so now, no, it doesn't move. Oh, this one, okay. So now, imagine a world and let's think about it. Imagine a world where we would be understood. Now, what does it mean understood? What does it mean to be understood when you have this unique AI machine? To be understood is to be able to answer the fundamental question, why? Why are we acting the way we act? Why now? Why this way? Why me? Why her? Why this? Since the beginning of human beings, okay, and I'm sorry that maybe I'm showing my back to you, we've been trying to predict. We looked at the stars, we read coffee, we had astrologists, whatever, but the amount of data today, we can start doing predictions. And big data tools are out there. And yet, they've reached their peak. They've reached their glass ceiling. So imagine a world where wherever you go, where there's a touch point, just like Sarit said, with an agent, with any kind of digital platform, you're understood. This is what Enfi does. We're imagining a world where you're understood, where it makes a better world. So now, imagine that machine 
going everywhere you go. It could be in the hospital, healthcare, could be in the car itself, that really understands your need, your motives, and your state of mind. Is it something that we can imagine? Is it something that we read about it? Each one of us grew up in stories. Pinocchio, yeah, I see that you're going with your head like this, right? We had Pinocchio, Gepetto wanted to give life to Pinocchio. We have our teddy bear that we want to give life to it, right? Is it possible today? Is those dreams possible today? Well, yes. With Infi, it's possible. So, what does it mean understand and reflect our mind? What does that mean? It means that we have created this AI machine that is based on our behavior with the most common device out there. We're able to reflect our, the, the mind, provide a blueprint of the human mind. What's the most common device out there? Someone give me an answer? Wake up, gentlemen, ladies. How about you, Ombre? The phone, right. We interact with the phone on a daily basis on the amounts of time, numerous times that we leave digital footprints. We're able to take those digital footprints, thousands of footprints, and provide and glue, the, glue them together and provide insights on our personality. We can profile each and every one of us. And the use cases are amazing. So, to be clear, the accurate picture begins here. We're not here to replace any BI systems out there. We're here to perfect them. To perfect their ability to understand us, moving from KYC, from knowing your customers, to understanding them. And once you understand, it, magic happens. Loyalty increases. Churn is preventive. We create stickiness. And the most important thing is we create revenue. We increase the revenue. And this solution is fitted for profit and nonprofit organizations. And we'll talk about it. So let's talk about the change that we see. Our solution, we just not, our claim to fame is not just saying it's a game changer. We are changing the world by fact that today, in a world that's going through this that massive digital transformation, we just heard, were you on the other panels where we talked about digital transformation? Everybody was talking about the fourth industrial revolution. Well, hell. We're on, the, we're on the fourth revolution, which is the AI revolution. And the AI revolution is all about reaching the end users in many ways. But they have to be understood. So some facts. Dear boss, can you just wrap up, please? Because yes. we are really having... The fact is that there are 8 billion people in the world, 65%, 60% users of smartphones. That means 3 billion and endless applications. The use cases are enormous. We focus on, sorry, healthcare, finance, and e-com. If we look at healthcare, by understanding the end user, we're able to motivate him to adhere to medical treatment, provide additional insights to the physicians that are able to talk not only on the physics, but also on the mental side. If we look at finance, creating a better world by actually Improving, especially in the third world and developing countries, the ability for underbanked people to receive microloans where they're not today being rejected. On a daily basis, 80% are being rejected from their need to receive a microloan. So it's good for the economy if we look at the conversion rate over here and the increase of revenue. So now we have reduced the rejection rate by double digit, by increased the revenue by over 200%. Same goes to an e-commerce world, where we work in an omni-channel world, where the touch points are only online, and yet the conversion rate has not changed in the past 20 years. It's always stayed in the 3 to 5%. We've been able to increase by that double, by double digit and increase the revenue again by over 200%. And all that fuzzy logic that you see over there is actually been, you see that Everything is actually centralized where we educated the user and created a superior user experience. So the new era that we're showing now, that we're presenting to the world, that Infi is brought to the world, is actually moving from KYC 
to you, I see, putting us human beings in the, in the center and creating a new world. A new world where it's internet of beings rather than only internet of things. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Bas. Highly appreciated. Thank you very much. I would like to continue with Ali Bey. And we have seen the global scale and perspective uh, from, from the gentleman also. What do you think about uh, our journey in AI evolution in the country, in Turkey? Yes, thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, and if it is not a matter for the audience, I want to continue in Turkish because it's a panel in Turkey and I am a Turkish speaker, so I hope it's not a big problem for you all. Uh, Şimdi yapay zeka konusu e, kritik bir konu. Burada zaten benden çok daha uzman ve detaylı kişiler var. E, bu konuyla ilgili işte birkaç tane sunum dinledik. E, ben bu tarz kompleks konuları anlamak için biraz geçmişe dönüp bakmak gerektiğine inanıyorum. E, i̇şte 2019 yılındayız, 2020 yılına gidiyoruz. E, yani milattan sonra 2000 yıl yaşanmış. Milattan önceye baktığınızda 18 milyon yıllık insan tarihinden bahsediliyor. Yani toplam hadi toparlayacak olsak 15-16 milyon yıl en az insan tarihi olduğunu biliyoruz. Şimdi böyle bir dünyada insan hareketlerini daha tam olarak özümseyip mesela insanın beyniyle ilgili olan birçok şey henüz hala bilinmiyor tıp dünyasında vesaire. Şimdi bu tarz bir dünyada yaşarken yapay zeka gibi konuların insanın predict etmek yani insanın yaptığı hareketleri anlayabilmek ve bunun daha sonrasında bazı kararlar vermek için yeterli olgunluğa gelmesi gerektiğine inanıyorum. Ben bir teknoloji fonu yönetiyorum. Türkiye'de teknoloji şirketlerine yatırım yapıyoruz. Ben mesela çok net bir örnek söyleyeyim. Türkiye'de ve dünyada teknoloji tarihi 50 yıllık. Yani 50 yıldan önce internet yoktu. 50 yıl geriye gittiğinizde internet yoktu. 20 yıl geriye gittiğinizde yani işte Facebook gibi sosyal ağlar vesaire 2004'lerde kurulmuş 15 yıllık bir internetin etkin iletişim için kullanılan tarafı var. 20 yıl geriye gittiğinizde akıllı telefonlar yoktu. Şimdi bunların hepsiyle oluşan e, altyapılarda bazı bilgilerin birikmesi, toplanması gerekiyor ki sonrasında bunlarla ilgili mantıklı kararlar verilebilsin ve bunlarla ilgili bazı çıkarımlar yapılabilsin. Olabilsin. Şimdi toplamda 50 yıl olan teknoloji ve internet tarihiyle oluşan işte birçok veri var. E, 2000 yıl milattan sonrası 18 milyon yıl toplam insan tarihinden bahsediyoruz. Dolayısıyla aslında burada yapılması gereken çok şey var. Tabi buna da şöyle bakmamak lazım. Biz hep Türkler işte sanayi devriminden bahsederiz. Sanayi devrimini konuşuruz ve deriz ki ah keşke işte 1960'larda o devrim arabaları yapılsaydı bugün işte sanayi devriminde biz de araba üreten şirketlerden birisi olurduk deriz. 1960'ları konuşurken 1970 işleri konuşurken işte neden yapılmadı falan diye vah ederiz. Şimdi 2020 diyelim hadi yani bir ay kaldı 2020'ye. 2020'deyiz. E, 2019'dayız. 2020'deyiz. 2080'lere geldiğimiz zaman da birileri dönüp şunu diyecek. Ya keşke 2020'de yaşayan adamlar şu robot teknolojilerine yapay zekaya yeterince yatırım yapsaydı. Biz şimdi 2080'e geldik ama hala işte şimdi sanayi devrimini konuşuyoruz. O zaman bilişim devrimi falan geçmiş farklı dönemler konuşuluyor olacak. Böyle kendi iç karmaşalarıyla işte savaşlarla şunlarla bunlar larla uğraşmak yerine yapay zeka yatırım yapsalardı diyecekler. Bunu şunun için söylüyorum toparlayacağım zamanı etkin kullanmak için. Şimdi 1960'ları düşünelim. İşte bizim bir Türk girişimcisi, biz girişimci bir milletiz. İşte gidiyoruz, görüyoruz. Örneğin şöyle bir bardak görüyoruz Avrupa'da bir yerde biraz farklı bir şekil. Ya bizde de normal bardaklar olsun. Bizim Türk girişimcisi bunu böyle bir iki aylık çalışmayla, üretim şeyiyle hemen gelip Türkiye'de üretip Türkiye pazarına sürebiliyor. En fazla üç ay, dört ay sürüyordu eski tarz üretimler. Şimdi eğer bugünlerde yapay zekaya, robot teknolojilerine Türkiye olarak doğru anlamda yatırım yapmazsak, biz teknoloji fonları olarak onları doğru şekilde desteklemezsek ama bunu da bilmeliyiz. İlk başta bahsettiğim gibi bu yapay zeka bugünden yarına çözülecek bir konu değil. Yani yapay zeka şu an ne yapıyor en basitinde? YouTube'a girdiğinizde daha önce izlediğiniz videolar benzer videolar öneriyor YouTube size. Ee, yani bu çok basit bir prediction. Yani diyor ki daha önce bunları beğendi ve bunu da beğenebilir. Ama aslında yeni şeyleri keşfetme ihtimalinizi ortadan kaldırıyor. Ben genelde YouTube izleyip bazı şarkılar dinlediğimde sonra arabaya binip radyo açtığımda hiç duymadığım şarkılar duyuyorum mesela ve diyorum ha böyle bir şarkı çıkmış. Şimdi yapay zeka hala emekleme aşamasında ama bizler 2080'de bizle ilgili kötü konuşulmaması için bugün bunlara yatırım yapmalıyız. Bunu da şöyle tamamlayayım son olarak. Az önce bahsettiğim gibi bizim Türk girişimciler gidip bir bardağı gördüğü zaman 1960'ta, 1970'te gelip Türkiye'de üretebiliyordu. En fazla bir yıl, iki yıl sonra aynı bardağa, aynı şişeye, aynı masaya, az önce gördüğünüz masa koltuklara sahip olabiliyorduk. Ama şimdi bir robotu görmemiz, 
Onu yapmamız için yeterli olmayacak. Yani Instagram'da gezerken bir sürü robot videoları görüyoruz ve son 3 yıldır bu videoların evrimlerine bir bakın. İlk önce bu robotlar birbirine bir yürüyebilir mi diye bakılıyordu. Sonra bu robotlar işte koşabilir mi diye bakılıyordu. Şimdi artık birbirine kapı açan robotlar haline geldi. Biz hala bu konuda hiçbir şey yapmadığımız için artık ileride bir robot görmemizde bizim için işte dışarıda da birkaç tane örnek var. Ya dünyanın geldiği nokta ile arada ciddi fark oluşacak. Ben bunu hep şey diyorum işte. Sayın Cumhurbaşkanı'nın da bir sözü var ya yani son olarak Ali Bey toparlayalım mı? Evet. E, işte çıraklık, kalfalık ve ustalık e, dönemi diye. İnternetin çıraklık dönemi bitti. İnternet ortaya çıktı. İşte iletişim, sosyal medya vesaire bu çıraklık dönemiydi. Birbirimizle iletişmeye başladık. Burada toplanan verilerle artık kalfalık döneminde eserler bırakma dönemine geçiyoruz. Umarım kalfalık döneminde Türk milleti olarak bu robot teknolojilerini ve yapay zekayı yakalayan bu alanda çalışan milletlerden biri olabiliriz. Thank you very much Ali. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so as the latest uh, knowledge that I got in the training in the summertime in Harvard, it was the, the AI has got three pillars. One is the robotic process automation, the second cognitive insight, the third cognitive engagement. And I'm in the healthcare sector. We are going to be living minimum a hundred years and plus default. It will be. Today, Let's say you are 50 years old. What brought you here last 25 years? You might be super successful whatever you do, but next 50 years, the skill set will not bring you there at all. And there's a very simple test. It's called the grandmother test. They're telling you, if you're telling your occupation, your job to your grandmother, if she understands, sorry for you. Sorry for you. And if you're saying, not my field, not my industry, not to me, sorry for you. And there were many movies, gigantic movies, really disruptive ones. You should think about yourself, not your company or government or whatever, individually where you are. That's why decision is yesterday. But if you are in this room, still staying without the lunch, it means you care about it. It's very important to highlight from my perspective and the last Speaker, uh, Hussein, can we get your perspective also in AI in general? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think my grandmothers ever understood anything I've done. <laughs> like you're lucky one. Um, <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're, we're a technology investor. We, we write checks to very small businesses and, and then hope they turn out to be very large businesses. And we've done this reasonably well in our first and our second fund uh, in Europe. You know, our, our view is, you know, this world is, is very globalized at this point. Uh, if you're building an artificial intelligence company of any kind, it, it is far more of a scale business than, than any other business because the data sets are the most important parts uh, of the equation. Um, the actual underlying algorithms for building the technologies on top of the data sets are actually rapidly commoditizing. Many of those techniques end up in, in published research papers, and so they permeate across, across the industry. So the question is, how do you gather all of the data on your side so that you can train your algorithm to, to be the most interesting? And, and I don't think this, this kind of world has very many in the way, very much in the way of national boundaries, uh, because whoever gets most of the data ends up building a compelling proposition and, and usually then expands out to the rest of the world. So the good news, uh, so on, on the one hand, I think a lot of this stuff becomes very global and kind of goes really largely to the winner. My old boss, uh, who, who used to run uh, uh, Google in China and now runs a really big fund in China, is convinced that largely this is a two-player ecosystem. It's the US and China, and that's about it. No one else really, there is no third place at all because those are the two big economies that A, produce the algorithms and the data, and then kind of get hegemony. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit more open-minded about that. I think mo most of these things can come out from anywhere in the world, but you have to engineer a mechanism in order to get the data on your side so you can scale really fast uh, and, then, and, then, and then cross borders. Uh, and that's, that's really hard. Um, we see this happening across Europe. I think Europe has to play catch up uh, in, in a lot of these kinds of things. And, and there's no reason why some of these things can't come from Turkey. We've seen things that come out of the Turkish economy that are yes. just as good. I mean, they're basically trained mathematicians uh, or, or computer scientists from the best universities who've come back here. The question is, can you end up getting the data set uh, to be able to train your model, uh, to be able to build something that's really interesting? Thank you very much. So, so since we have no time, I will ask every single speaker to talk about the AI, only one 
word, not a sentence or paragraph, please. One word. AI and for your audience, what would be your uh, important message in one sentence, one word even? It might be transformation, be ready, adaptation, agility. Just one word from the everybody else. Starting with Uchanan, please. Impact. Impact, very good. Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Um, I think emotional sense. Okay. Bas? Behavior. Behavior. Behavior. Integration. Technology and people. Yes. Thank you again to audience for the patience before the lunch break. And then uh, it was a pleasure to, for me to host all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very insightful discussion. And I would like to invite Mr. Erol Kusai, please, for presenting the plaques of appreciation. Thank you all very much. And yes, it is finally time for lunch. So if we could be back here in one hour after lunch for more interesting panels. Thank you.